Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North and this video is all about perlite. So this is the perlite here, commonly found in a lot of horticultural growing mediums. You can buy it in your garden centre, sometimes local DIY store. This is horticultural grade. Um, it means that it's chemically safe for your plants and it's that, that's a good size for use in growing mediums. You can also buy it in industrial sizes. Um, but this is the horticultural grade that you'll most commonly find. Now, perlite is actually a volcanic rock. What it is, is uh, they mine it out of the ground, cross it into small pieces, but when heated, this volcanic rock, which is actually a type of volcanic glass, expands hugely, a bit like when you pop popcorn. And so what that does is it creates lots of little small holes inside, inside the... Um, the structure of the stone which gives you this very light material which has very little weight but is very porous. Now the advantages of perlite is it greatly improves the drainage of the soil. It also helps with some absorption of water as well. So the small holes in the perlite help the soil by in introducing space for air to collect but also introducing some space for some moisture. Now the moisture retention of it isn't very great so in general it will actually reduce the moisture holding capacity of the soil but the main purpose of adding perlite is so that you've got an open structure to your soil which helps the roots to grow easier but also you've got a lot more oxygen getting to the plant roots. So here I have two composts it's just a multi-purpose compost and eats the only difference is this is just multi-purpose compost straight out of the packet and just with a bit of added water and this one is multi-purpose compost straight out of the package again with a bit of added water but with this time added with some perlite it's probably got about a third of perlite in this mixture so in this is a good example of the difference it can make to your compost so first of all this is a normal compost same amount of moisture as the other one as you can see when I squeeze it quite hard, water dribbles out the bottom, it's quite saturated, but it also stays quite compact. You can see there, I can pick it up with my two fingers. It's breaking apart a bit, but it's pretty solid. Whereas with the perlite, I squeeze that really hard. No water's coming out of that, and it just falls apart. I can't hold that. As you can see there, it's completely broken apart now. Whereas with the other one, it breaks apart, but it's, you need a bit more force to do it. So that's the compaction that it helps with. And as you can see, it holds a lot less water. So this is particularly good for plants like succulents or cacti. But it's also helpful for all kinds of plants. Because most plants do like a free-draining soil. And this, although it makes it free-draining, um, like, like gravel as well, it's better than gravel because it has these micropores which can also which actually hold more air. So you get a lot better better air in your soil. As you can see there it's nice and loose which helps a lot with the root growth compared with normal, compact, normal compost. Also as you saw it, it stays quite soft even after heavy compaction which is good because after several years uh, in the same compost the soil will slowly compact and this helps mitigate that so that your compost will still stay quite open and nice for several years. So this can help with that. So I would recommend using this in varying amounts. About a third for most, a third or a bit less for the average plant. Plant that likes it free draining you can up that to closer to a half or 50% perlite. And that will help a lot with the drainage. So a lot of commercial compost mix won't actually have perlite in them. The main reason is perlite is quite expensive and so they don't often put it in there but if you can afford it and if you've got any perlite it's very good to put some in your compost because this will help a lot with the growth of your plant so I recommend whenever you can put a little bit of perlite you can also as well as using perlite as a as a soil improver so for, for in, in pots and compost mixes you can also dig it into the garden to improve the drainage if you have heavy clay or anything that's waterlogged soil it's also very useful for use as a sterile growing medium. So if you're doing um, hydroponics or aquaponics, it's ideal for that because it's inert, it doesn't react with the plants. 
doesn't have any nasty chemicals in it as long as it's horticultural grade it lasts for many years and it helps with the it helps as I say it holds it's free draining so it, when you fill it with water for your aquaponic system there's plenty of movement of the water but the plants can still put their roots into it and it's fantastic because it's sterile so you won't need to worry about disease and you don't have to worry about any bugs or, or pests getting into it as well it's also very lightweight which is helpful because if you want to have to be moving your plant pots around or moving large amounts of soil around it actually makes the soil a lot lighter because it's so light itself so it's very useful for that purpose also it's an insulator a very good insulator so if you have it in your pots it will also mean that your plants can survive a degree or two colder of frost and protects them from any hard frosts so that's perlite a very useful horticultural supplement to your soils I would recommend putting it in most of your compost mixes and um, it can be found in any any major garden center or horticultural outlet